Hi there, I'm Nina and welcome to Paint the Kitchen Red. Today I'm going to be telling you about the Instant Pot Dual Evo Plus. I'm going to tell you about the parts, how to put it together, and also how to do a water test. The reason you do a water test is to familiarize yourself with the Instant Pot, but there's another reason and that is to make sure that there's nothing wrong with your Instant Pot. So if you do a water test and there's something wrong with it because you can have a defective unit then you can easily send it back and get a replacement so let's get started Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is get the Instant Pot out of the box. If you're like most people, you're probably pretty intimidated by this appliance because it has so many functions and buttons and it just looks scary. So I'm here to tell you it is not that difficult to use and it is very safe. There are so many safety features built into the Instant Pot that there's nothing to worry about. And in terms of complexity, uh, there are many functions and buttons, but you don't need to learn to use all those today. You can just learn a few basic buttons and functions and get going. And then I will be putting out another video with all the details of all the functions down the line so you can learn about those later. But for now, you just need to get this Instant Pot out of the box and I will show you everything you need to know. So let's get started. Okay, so let's take a look at everything that comes with the Instant Pot. You have a couple of manuals a condensation collector which gets attached to the back of the Instant Pot and I'll show you that in a little bit. And you have an extra sealing ring in addition to the one that comes with your lid. And this is a metal trivet which is really useful if you want to raise up uh, your food uh, or if you want to use the pot in pot cooking method which is something that you can read more about on my blog. And this is the base unit, also known as the outer pot. And this is where the inner pot is going to be placed. It has a cord that's attached. This is the inner pot with the two silicone handles. And uh, you have these markings on the inside, which tell you the quartz, liters, and cups. And you also have the max fill line and the half fill line, and you'll need to observe these based on what you're cooking. Uh, your recipe should tell you. So here we have the lid and a steam release assembly, which is made out of the steam release cover, which kind of diffuses the steam that comes out of the Instant Pot. You have a steam release valve, which can also be removed and cleaned periodically. And finally, we have the steam release pipe, which is where the steam comes out of. This is the steam release switch, which goes from seal to vent. And you'll notice when it's in the vent position, the latch goes up. And when it's in the seal position, that latch goes back down. And that's what allows you to do a quick release of pressure. Here we have the float valve, which I can access from the inside. And it can go up and down. It'll be in the up position when the Instant Pot is sealed and it'll be in the down position once the pressure has been released. This is the handle. And I'm gonna turn the lid around. We have the quick cool tray. There's a cover that can be lifted out. And the way this is supposed to work is you're supposed to be able to put a tray of ice on this metal part and it'll cool down the Instant Pot for the natural release process. And so this just makes the natural release a little bit faster. But as of this, when I made this video, the quick cool tray was not available. So I can't really show it to you, but it's supposed to be available very soon. So you put the cover back in by pushing the lid in and the latch and let's replace the uh, steam release valve and the steam release cover. I'm going to turn the lid over and here you see the ceiling ring rack which is where the ceiling ring goes in and this is the anti-block shield and the float valve. The float valve can be removed by 
removing the silicone cap and you can just put it right back on. You can take the float valve out and you can wash it. Sometimes you might need to do that. And then you put it right back into the hole and put the cap back on. The anti-block shield is a little bit difficult to remove with your bare hands, so I like to use a silicone trivet. Now you can try it uh, from the front. I have a hard time, I've been having a hard time with this particular model of Instant Pot doing it from the front, but from the back it comes out really easily. So you just push it inward and upward and it comes right off. You can wash it and then once it's clean, you just push it right back in. It's really easy to put back in. The final thing I want to show you is putting the ceiling ring in. You just kind of put it over the ceiling ring rack and push down and make sure it goes into the rack all the way around. Uh, when you first get your Instant Pot, you may find that the ceiling ring is really hard to push in, uh, but just keep at it. Uh, once you start cooking with it, it kind of stretches out and it's much easier to take out and put back in. But just make sure it's pushed in all the way around because if you don't do that, you can have ceiling issues with your Instant Pot and you want to try and avoid that. Remove the ceiling ring, you kind of grab it and pull up and once you get a little bit of it up, it's easy to pull on the rest of the ceiling ring and remove the ceiling ring. Just be careful, you don't tear it, don't use too much force, but it's pretty sturdy. And then once you take it out, you can wash it by hand or you can wash it in the dishwasher. I wash it in the top rack of my dishwasher every time I use the Instant Pot. There's one more thing I need to show you and that's a condensation collector. It gets put onto the back of the Instant Pot. And let me show it to you from a different angle. You just kind of slide it out and slide it in. Once in a while you need to just check it and make sure that there's nothing uh, in there. Uh, sometimes when you cook pasta or uh, messy foods like that, if you have your lid propped open, uh, you can have a lot of um, liquid and and junk <laughs> get into this condensation collector and if you don't check it often enough you could have a science experiment in there so check it periodically to make sure there's nothing in there okay now let's do the water test here we have the base unit i'm going to stick the inner pot into the base unit make sure it sits properly and i'm going to plug the instant pot into a wall outlet and add about two cups of water. Now the Instant Pot manual tells you to use three cups of water, but I find that two cups of water works just fine. You can use two or three. With two, it just takes a little less time to come to pressure, and so anything to save time. I just wanna take a minute to show you how you open and close the lid. You have a notch, like a little arrow that you see on the base unit and you need to make sure that the arrow on the lid lines up with the notch on the base unit and then you turn the lid counterclockwise. The steam release switch should be in the seal position. It should automatically be in that position, but just double check it. To do the water test, we're gonna press pressure cook and you'll see that the custom program is blinking. So just press the knob to select custom and then we will change the time to five for five minutes and all you need to do next is press start and that'll begin the water test. And you'll see that the display changes to on and I've sped up the video here and you can see the progress of the preheating on the bar right on the top. And once the Instant Pot has preheated, uh, you'll notice that there'll be some steam coming out of the top from the float valve, and you may even hear some sounds. There's nothing to worry about. And the float valve will soon come up to the up position. At that point, your Instant Pot is pressurized, but the display may still say on. It should soon change to five. Uh, in this video, it appears to have happened right away, but that's because I've sped it up. Uh, normally, it can take a couple of minutes even for the display to go from on to the countdown. Once it changes to five, it'll count all the way down to zero minutes, 
and at that point your pressure cooking is done and you're ready to release the pressure. If you look at the progress bar at the top of the display you'll see that it's in keep warm mode and so now you'll notice that the countdown is going up from zero to uh, one minute and it'll keep counting up and keep warm mode. But we're gonna go ahead and release the pressure by pushing the switch to the vent position. You'll see the steam coming out of the steam release cover. It's a diffused steam. So unlike some other models of the Instant Pot, it's a little less scary. So that's one of the things I really like about this Instant Pot Evo is the steam release. So once all the steam has been released, the float valve will drop into the down position and now it's safe to open the Instant Pot lid. So using the handle, I'm gonna turn the lid counterclockwise and you might feel a little pulling because of the suction from the steam. Just be careful and watch out for the steam because it's gonna be very hot. Put the lid fin into the slot of the base unit and that'll prop the lid open. So you've completed the water test. Congratulations. Okay, I think I've given you enough information for you to get going with your first recipe. I'll include a few links of recipes that I think would be great ideas for you to try out as your first recipe. Be sure to like this video, and if you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe using the subscribe button below. And I hope you enjoy your new Instant Pod Duo Evo Plus, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.